Welcome to Lesson 3, Graph General Rational Functions. Our objectives are to identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes as guides and then graph our function using a table. In your last lesson, you graphed simple rational functions and you graph those through transformation. So you either did left or right or you moved up or down in order to identify the asymptotes. When we have general functions, we can no longer do that, but we can identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. That's what you are going to be doing to use as a guide. So it's to the simple rational functions. If we can find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, then make a table of values, these will be easy to graph. Here are some examples of the types, or I should say of the different forms of this function that you might see while you're graphing. So it could look like this. Notice now we have three legs, kind of a quadratic looking thing here in the middle, um, or going upwards in a positive direction. Or it could look like this with the three legs. This middle one is kind of an S. So keeping that in mind, that to draw your legs given a couple of points. All right, let's go ahead and look at the difference here between this and simple rational functions. We're still going to find vertical asymptotes the same by looking at the denominator. Whatever makes the denominator equal zero cannot be in our function. That would be undefined. Those would be the asymptotes still. Horizontal asymptotes, however, are going to change. So we have three rules down in your notes. If you have these in your notes, it'll be really easy to find the horizontal asymptotes. The first, and all of these have to do with our exponents. Remember that the exponents are just the degree of the polynomial. So in this first function, we have a degree of 2 in our numerator, and we have a degree of 2 in our denominator. Now we always look at the highest degree when we are looking at these rules. So in this first function, the top exponent equals the bottom exponent. If that's the case, then in order to find a horizontal asymptote, we merely just need to take the coefficient of our numerator of the x squared term and the coefficient of our denominator of the x squared or highest degree term and divide those. So in this case, we would have a, which is the coefficient here of our highest degree, the x squared, divided by b, and that will give us our horizontal asymptote. In other words, that gives us what y equals, that dotted line, whatever a is divided by b. And we'll try an example. In our second situation, the top exponent, so that's just x to the 1 power here, is less than the bottom exponent, which is x squared. Now, if that's the case, then we would have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 every time. So it doesn't matter what numbers are in front of our x terms. We would always just know that we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Okay, so that's if it's bottom heavy. What happens if it's top heavy, meaning the top exponent is greater than the bottom exponent? Like this one, we have x cubed divided by x squared. Well, what we have is called an oblique asymptote, which is sort of like a linear function. But for this class, we won't be exploring that. So for now, we will just say no horizontal asymptote. In other words, function that looks like this with the numerator with a greater exponent than the denominator, then we will not draw a horizontal asymptote, only a vertical. Okay, let's try three examples, one for each. In our first example, what do we have? Well, we can tell this isn't a simple rational function because notice the difference. We have a variable in the numerator. With our simple rational functions, we just had a number up here. So we know this has got to be a general rational function, so we need to think about our rules. And in this case, we have the top exponent equals the bottom exponent. So remember what we do. If this is the case, we take the coefficient, which is 6, of our numerator and divide it by our coefficient, which is 3, of our denominator to get 2. So our horizontal, our y equals asymptote, is just y. And y equals 2 means we would put in a horizontal asymptote right here. Okay, great. That's the only difference between a general and a simple function. 
So let's continue on as we did before. Let's find the vertical asymptote. Now remember, to find the vertical asymptote, we always look at the denominator. The denominator cannot equal zero. If it equals zero, then our function is undefined because we cannot divide by zero. So to find the vertical asymptote, we merely just need to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So we would add one to each side and get 3x equals 1, then we would divide by 3, and we would end up with a vertical asymptote of x equals 1 third. So where x equals 1 third, we need to have a vertical asymptote. And this is 1, so 1 third is going to be, and I'm just going to do a rough estimate, but it's going to be really close to 0, but just a little bit off. Okay, great. Now we just need to pick points like we've always done. And remember, pick points to the right and to the left of where the two asymptotes cross. So I'm going to look for x values to the right, which I can see I have a 1 and a 2. Those might be good. Um, I'm going to look for x values to the left. So I might choose 0, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so I've recorded those values that I chose. Notice I have one extra one. Typically, you really only need about four values in order to figure out where your function is going. Um, but remember that we saw before, if I look back at the start of this, that some of these functions have three legs. Now, how do I know if I have three legs or two legs? Well, you can tell by the number of asymptotes. If I look at this one here on the right, I've got two vertical asymptotes instead of one. Same with the one in the middle and same with the one on the left. So if I go back to my example, I only have one vertical asymptote, so it's a pretty safe bet to assume I only have two legs for this. So the tricky part is I need to plug these in and solve. This is where a calculator might help, but we're going to try to do this mental math. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. And then on the top, we have 6 times 2, which is negative 12, and negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. Well, a negative divided by a negative becomes positive. So we have 13 over 7. And I'm just going to leave it like that because I know that's approximately 1 point something. 7 doesn't go into 13 twice, but it goes into 1 and a little bit more. And that's good enough for a quick estimate. Let's go ahead and do negative 1. So we would have negative 3 minus 1, that would give us negative 4 on the bottom. For the top, we would have negative 6 minus 1, that would give us negative 7 on the top. And remember, negative divided by negative is a positive, so we would have 7 over 4. 0 would get us negative 1 on the bottom and negative 1 on the top, because anything times 0 is 0, so 0 minus 1 is minus 1, and 0 minus 1 is again minus 1 which would give us a positive 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. Trying the 1, we would get 6 minus 1 on top for 5, and 3 minus 1 on the bottom for 2. So this becomes 5 halves. And trying a 2, we would get 12 minus 1 on top, which is 11. And we would get 6 minus 1 on the bottom, which is 5. I have a lot of fractions, but again, I'm just doing a rough sketch, so I just need to know approximately what quadrant these are in. So my first one is at negative 2, so I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go up 1 and a little bit more. So that's right around in here somewhere. It doesn't cross the asymptote, it's actually below it. My next point is negative 1, and again, 7 fourths is 1 and a little bit more, but it's not above the asymptote. So I can bet that this leg is going to be down here because I have two points and we're going to always follow the asymptotes as a guide. Okay, great. Now let's look at zero. So zero, I have a one. And I should have probably brought my leg over a little bit more, but again, still in that same quadrant. I forgot I did an extra point for that quadrant. Okay, let's go ahead and cross over. So we have one and five halves. Here's one. Five halves is about two and a half. One, two and a half. So that's actually going to be above the asymptote. And then two, I get 11 fifths, which is more than two as well. So that's also above here. 
that means that this asymptote, if I do a rough sketch, is going to look like this. So again, it's not that important that I plot these points precisely, merely that I get an idea of which quadrant my legs are in, and then I use my asymptotes to help guide my end behavior. All right, let's try another example. This time, our top exponent will be less than our bottom exponent. Remember what happens with our asymptotes when the top is less than the bottom. Notice this is only x to the 1, and this is x squared. Well, if we go back and look where our top exponent is less than our bottom, we always have an asymptote of y equals 0. So that makes it easy. We just need to plot y equals 0, which would be right here along the x-axis. Okay, now let's move on to our vertical asymptote. Well, remember, our vertical asymptote is just setting the bottom equal to 0 and solving. I can solve this one of two ways. I could add 1 to both sides and take the square root, and I would get plus or minus 1. That would be a quick way. Or I could factor this into x minus 1, x plus 1, since we have a difference of squares, and then set each of these factors equal to 0. Either way, my vertical asymptote is going to equal positive 1 and negative 1. Here's an example where I have two vertical asymptotes. So I know I'm going to have three legs instead of two. So I'm going to go ahead and plot my asymptotes. And I know now that I'm going to have a leg here in the middle, as well as a leg on the left and a leg on the right. When I pick my points then, I need to pick points in each one of these areas. So to the left over here, so maybe I'll pick a negative 3 and a negative 2. I'm going to need to pick points here in the middle. Well, I'm obviously going to pick 0. And then I'm going to pick a negative 0.5 and a positive 0.5, just so that I get points on either side. And then I need to pick some points to the right of where they cross. So I'm going to pick 2 and 3. Now, it might help if you use your calculator because of the 0.5, but we could call this 1 half. It's just difficult to square this in your head. So I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to come up with some y values. Okay, I have found my points and notice that these I went ahead and put in decimal form because it was easier to do that on my calculator. Be careful that anytime you're squaring in your calculator that when you square a negative 3, you have to put the whole negative and the 3 in parentheses like this before you square it. Otherwise, your calculator will pop out with a negative 9 instead of a positive 9. All right, let's plot our point. So our first point is over here at negative 3, negative 3 eighths, so not quite 1. And really, just from that one point, I know where my leg is going to sit. But let's go ahead and plot negative 2 and then negative 4 thirds. That's a little bit more than 1, so that's about here. So I'm in a really good position to draw one of my legs just from those two points. Okay, let's look here to the middle. So we have a negative 0.5, which is right here, but then we go up one and a little bit more, so that's about right here. At zero, I have zero. And then at 0.5, I have a negative one and a little bit more, so that's right here. Remember that picture that we looked at at the very beginning, this one here? Notice that our curve in the middle does cross over our horizontal asymptote, and those middle, middle functions can, because remember it's the end behavior that follows the asymptote. So what it does in the middle is okay. So in this case, it's going to look like that. We're going to come up here, and then we're going to come down here and follow our ends are going to follow these asymptotes. So it doesn't matter what we do in the middle. Now let's see where we're going to put our leg here, either on the top or the bottom. Well, when I go to 2, my point is 4 thirds, which is 1 and a little bit more. So that pretty much answers the question. But I'm going to go ahead and graph 3, and then 6 eighths is right in there, a little more than half. So there is our leg for our top half. All right, think of this like a puzzle. If you can solve the puzzle of which quadrant you're in, it's pretty easy to follow these guidelines, these asymptotes to help you. All right, last problem. What happens when we have a top exponent greater than the bottom? Well, remember, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. 
In fact, we have an oblique one. Let's see if we can look at it when we graph it, but I will not make you calculate it for this class. Okay, our vertical asymptote then, remember that it's just our denominator. We set that equal to zero to see what would make that equal zero, and we can see that one would cause our denominator to be zero. And we don't want a one because we don't want division by zero. So let's go ahead and put in our vertical asymptote here where x equals one. Okay, I'm ready to find points, and I'm still gonna find points to the left and to the right of my vertical asymptote. So to the left, I have zero, negative one, and to the right, I have two and three. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those points. Negative one, zero, two, and three. Now I'm going to plug those in and come up with some y values. Okay, I now have my y values. Notice when I plug in a zero, zero squared is zero plus three times zero is zero, and zero minus one is negative one. Well, if I have a zero on the top, then my whole equation is zero. Zero divided by anything is zero, so remember that. Okay, I'm ready to go. So I have negative one, positive one right here. I have zero, zero, and then I have two, 10, so that's way up here. And then I have three, nine. This is a little bit harder to think about, but remember that the, this asymptote defines our end behavior. So I know that right here is gonna come up and get really close to the end, but it's not going to hit it. And then just following this train, it's probably gonna come out like this. So this one's gonna come up really close to my asymptote but not hit it, and then again following this trend, this train of thought here, it's probably gonna come out like this. So we have a vertical asymptote in here somewhere where this leg is gonna get really close to it and this leg is gonna get really close to it. I don't know what it is, I can calculate it, but again, we're not going to do that for this class. And that concludes our lesson today for how to graph general rational functions. So remember, the most important thing is to have this in your notes. The only difference between graphing these and the simple ones is that we no longer can use transformations because we have a variable in the numerator and because we're dealing with higher, higher degree polynomials, not just x. So remember that when the top and the bottom are equal, we find the horizontal asymptote by taking the coefficient a and dividing it by coefficient b. If we have the top less than the bottom, it's always y equals zero. And if we have the top greater than the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. It makes it a little bit difficult to guess the graph, but we know that our asymptote would come down here, something like this, and be an oblique asymptote.